here with one of the brightest prospects in all of boxing, uh, El Mono Jesus Ramos uh, from Arizona, uh, undefeated uh, junior middleweight, now 154 pounder. Um, it's good to have you on, Jesus. First, I got to ask you about that nickname, El Mono. Um, where did that nickname come from and, and, and where did you get that nickname? Um, my my father gave me that nickname when I was real, real small for being cute. You know, he'd always put the, the shades on me, the, the hats, and I'd always leave it. So he'd call me Mono. It's like, uh, you know, just cute. It stands for cute. And um, it stuck with me. You know, I, I didn't like, I didn't want it to be my nickname. But, you know, kids from, from school, you started coming to the gym and all this. And in high school, you know, everybody knew me as Mono. So it was like, I can't change it anymore. I just got, I just got to stick with it. And I've, I've liked it, you know. Absolutely. And it, 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 it sticks with you, right? Like, I'll never forget that, right? Because I hear, and I, and I think El Mono is, I'm not a fluent speaker as fast, but that means the monkey, right? So you're saying it means cute too, yeah. Um, so I, I want to get into that, right? Obviously, you started boxing at a young age. You're from a fight family. How did you get your start in, in the sport? It all started, you know, with my uncles. They were all amateur boxers, and um, they would train in my garage with my father. You know, they're they're they're, they're his brothers, and um, they would come over and they would train in the, in the garage. And I would always just come outside and and you know watch them train all the time. And I always wanted to be like them. And I was I was training with them. I would wake up with them and go run. You know, I would, I was doing all these things, and I was young. I was about six. And it was getting tough, you know, just fighting. I mean, training with no fighting because I, I had to be eight to start competing. So I let it go for a while, man, um, about a year. And then when I turned eight, I told my dad, you know, I'm ready. And he he, he, he told me to give him one year without nonstop training. And I did, man. Not, uh, I didn't miss a day, you know. And um, he, he, he decided to let me, let me fight. And um, I haven't stopped since then, man. It's been a pleasure to watch you. Obviously, um, your uncle is the original star, right, of, of the Ramos family. Um, really fun fighter, exciting fighter, who's having like a resurgence. He's, he's not that old. He's about 32. I mean, he's not that old, right? 30. Um, 30. Is it a 30? Okay. So, he, I mean, I'm from Texas, and he beat up my boy, a good friend of mine, Omar Figueroa. That was tough to take as a Texan, but it was a really, <laughs> really good performance. He had a fight with Ugas which he lost in a really, really close fight, which looks really, really good in retrospect what Ugas did to, to Pacquiao. But what's that like? Is that Does that make it easier for you having a star in your family or is it added pressure? Um, No, I think it, it makes it easier, of course, because, you know, my uncle, he kind of paved the way. He, I mean, in, his, in the beginning of his career, he had to fight guys like Reggie Progress, uh, Ivan Branchik. He had to fight the tough guys. And um, he kind of paved the way for me. And the only pressure that I feel is I had to be as good as him. You know, my, my uncle works extremely hard, man. Every time we're at the gym, um, he's working really, really hard. So I, I really do look up to him. And, um, you know, I, I wish I had the motor that he has because he's always going, always going. And um, it motivates me a lot. He's coming off a couple impressive performances in a row. You guys have the same PVC, you know, uh, management company. Do you know what's next for, for Abel? Do you know when we'll, be back, when we'll see him back in the ring? Yeah, it's looking like January 29th, man. It's gonna be a good fight. Um, I won't okay. say I won't say names for him, but uh, it's Jan January 29th is a day for him. And I it, think it, I might know. I'm not gonna say anything. I I might know who that is. Um, I will leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. I might know who it is. Uh, <laughs> um, it's always exciting. It's always been exciting to watch Abel. Um, now you had a an honor of fighting on the same card as him. What was that like? What was it like? You know. A family affair. You guys are fighting on the same card. I mean, you fought first early in the prelims, and he fought in the main event. Um, but I mean, what's it like fighting on the same card as your, as your uncle? It's great, man. You know, I was I was on, on his undercard when he fought for the world title against Ugas, and I mean, we were in camp together. I think that's what mattered the most: just training camp, being in there with them, and being able to push each other. And you know, before the fight cutting weight, all of that, you know, we, we, all did, we did it together. And that stuff that I had to go through by myself, that he has to go through by, uh, by himself. So having him, it really, it like, it's almost like support. You know, you, you know, you got somebody else doing the same thing as you and, and going through the same thing as you. So it helps, it helps for support. And uh, it's just amazing, you know, because it's all family. My father works our corner, so it's his brother. 
and they taught family. It was, we went in the bubble, and it was just it was great. It was a great experience. Um, and I mean, obviously, you're not just you know when people first see that like, you're Abel's nephew, you're Abel's nephew, but now you're a star of your own, right? I mean, you're stealing. We were talking about you. I put you in the same group as like Virgil Ortiz, Boots Enos, a couple other guys. Um, and Chris Colbert as the future of the sport, right? Like you're going to carry the 154 pound division um, for a while. You know, um, was it tough kind of getting out of your uncle's shadow and becoming your own man? Or did you just blow so many guys out so quickly that it just kind of happened? Yeah, it just kind of happened. You know, um, I never thought about uh, being in the uncle's uh, shadow because I've always, every time he does something, you know, good. I mean, like I said, I, I look up to him. So every time he wins, every time he does something, I'm super proud of him. So I never take it like, oh, I'm just going to be under that shadow. You know, I always thought, well, you know, it's, that's good that my uncle's having this time. You know, I know my time's coming. My time's coming. And I always, you know, stayed in the gym, stayed focused like like, like him. And um, it happened, man. It happened out of nowhere, you know. I started beating up, you know, all these guys. I started fighting the Javier Molina, Brian Mendoza. And um, that's where, you know, my career really started to take off. It, you look at your... You look at your record and you say that's a, that's a good record. Like, that's a pretty good resume. And then you factor in the fact that you just turned twenty, and it's yeah. like, you know, they were talking about guys like Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney when they were twenty as these phenoms. Your resume at twenty is better than theirs. Uh, I mean, do you, obviously PBC and, and and the people behind you are pushing you pretty quickly. Um, is that serve as extra motivation to you? Like, okay, these people really really believe in me, and they're not afraid to match me with top level fighters early in my career. Um, it doesn't, it, it's something that we, we want, that we've taken, you know, these big fights because these tough fights, they're tough. I mean, I'm only 20, but I know what I can do. I've seen it in the, in the, in the, in the gym, you know, when I was sparred top, you know, top pros at the elite level and I've, I've sparred them and, and I, I know how I've done and I know what I can do. So it's like, why waste my time with, with, um, building up a record? when I can, you know, start learning different stuff from fights because, I mean, sparring and, and professional fights, they're diff they're completely different. You know, you, you can never get ready for a fight, you know, just like like in sparring and all that, you can never be 100% for a fight. It's so many things you learn in a fight. So that's why I started stepping it up. That's why I took on Javier Molina. And he had just fought Pedraza. He had, you know, I mean, Molina had, had a lot of experience. And um, we took that fight for the same reason. We continue to grow and not be stuck at that. It happens to most prospects where they just keep fighting the same level of competition and they get stuck. You know, we want them to keep growing and that's why we take these fights. Well, yeah, they, they, I mean, they got to be confident that you have the ability to beat these guys, right? And when I saw Javier Molina, I'm like, I really like Jesus Ramos. That's a big step up really early. And then obviously you handle them. And then you fought Mendoza in your next fight, yeah. um, which is, so I want to ask you about that fight. We'll get let's get to that, right? Like obviously you were winning rounds, you beat them up, but you're used to knocking. I know Molina went the distance too, but you were really teeing off on Mendoza. Um, you know, did you get to a point in that fight like, okay, he's not getting knocked out? I guess we're going all ten rounds today. Or I mean, what's that like when you're used to stopping people and blowing them out, and then there's someone like Mendoza who doesn't matter what you hit him with, he's just not going anywhere. Yeah, he wasn't going anywhere, man. He was a tough fighter. And, uh, you know, I made sure I never lost my head, never got discouraged like that. Like, oh, man, you know, I'm not doing anything to him. So I, 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 you know, kept the, kept the work rate up and all that. But, um, yeah, you know, at one point I realized he wasn't going anywhere. So I just decided I had, I had to keep winning rounds. I had to keep winning rounds. Um, it didn't matter. I knew, I knew what I was going in there against with, uh, Brian Mendoza and he wasn't going to quit either. So I just had to keep working. And, um, it's, it takes a lot, you know, because in the Javier Molina fight, um, I, like you said, I had been knocking people out, and I didn't. I didn't knock Molina out, and I, it was almost like I lost. You know, I came back home, and everyone everyone that usually is like, oh, you got to knock out this and that, congratulations. They were all like, oh, but you didn't knock him out. I was like, yeah, but I won. But, you know, it was it seemed like a loss to me because <laughs> nobody was excited. So I kind of had to mature from that, you know, in the Brian Mendoza fight as well and just – it's a win, you know, it's a win and it's a, it's a statement. And especially as you move up. I mean, you're not going to knock everyone out, right? Like 
Tank Davis just went the distance. I mean, you're, you're not going to stop everyone no matter how hard you hit, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's a good lesson. You get to go 10 rounds. You went 10 rounds with a really good fighter, a good test who, who stood up. to you. And you also got to show us, you know, the media, the fans, a lot of skills that we didn't know you had in that fight, right? Like, we, we watch you. We see you. We, we look at you as, like, a, a come forward, just a come forward force, like, like, a, like a bull in there. But you showed in that fight that you – your footwork is really good. Your combination punching is good. You can back up. You can fight from all ranges. I mean, when you have a fighter that's not going anywhere, I mean, is that is it good to be able to work on everything like you were with Mendoza and show off yeah. all of your tools? Yeah, I think I think it was really good because, like you said, a lot of people categorize me as just a come forward fighter. You know, that just likes to you know look for power punches, get the knockout. But I can do a lot more than that. And I, like I said, I've seen it. You know, I've seen it in the gym. I, I know what I can do. And I know my style. And, I mean, I, I just need somebody to, you know, that, that's going to bring that out of me. And I don't think I used everything. You know, I think I still have a lot more in my arsenal. And, um, and you know, as competition keeps growing, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to show all of that. The, the skills are, are, you know, obviously the – the size and the and the strength and, and the power is what catches your eye. But when you really start to watch it and watch tape on you, the, the skills that you have for a guy your size and strength with your power is really really unique. Um, I you know we talked about I said you're the fighter at 20 that Golden Boy wished uh, Jaime Munguia was when he came up at 54, right? Like, um, th th there's so much to you. How would you describe your style in the ring? Because I know you don't like being called just a come forward fighter. Like, how would you describe your style? You know, I th I feel like I'm a I, I'm just smart. I'm I'm a smart fighter that can adapt to to anything. You know, I li I like I like to come forward. I like to bring my opponents down, keep a high pace. But like I said, I I can do. I can go. I can fight going backwards. I can counter punch you. Um, you know, I can set. I can set traps. You know, I'm 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 actually really good at setting traps. I've done it in sparring. I've done it in in you know amateur fights. All of this. So I've done it before, you know, it's just, like I said, I haven't had somebody that is going to, you know, take me to that level where I need to use it. So, I mean, as of right now, you know, Brian Mendoza was the toughest test and um, he was, he, he, he did bring something out of me that I hadn't shown, but I think I still have a lot more, you know? So, I mean, Nick, I can be considered a boxer puncher, you know, I just, I, I hit hard, but at the same time, I'm a, I'm a good, I'm a smart boxer. So, uh, like the, the natural comparison is a left hand at Munguia, but like you're more Jamal Charlo than you are Munguia. Like you're more, the boxing skills are really, really impressive to go along with the power, Um, which, you know, I think as your career progresses, you know, and you, you fight higher level competition and you can't just blow everyone out. People are going to see how skilled, how gifted of a, of a fighter you are and, you know, how sharp your skills really are and, and, and the traps that you can set and, and the way that you use your jab and your footwork. Like it's all there. Um, it, it's, it's been a pleasure getting to watch you this far. Now, um, obviously you're at 54 now you've outgrown 47. You look at you, right. Um, Where's your future? Is your future at 54? Is that a weight you plan on staying at? And and, and what can we see out of uh, Jesus Ramos in the near future? I think 54 um, is the weight that I'm planning on staying at for a, a while. Uh, I think a lot longer than 40, 40 and 47. You know, I'm 20, so I don't think I'm going to grow much anymore. You know, at 40, I was still small. 47, I, I still had a little growth spurt. Um, and now I think 54 is just the right right weight. You know, I feel good. I feel like I, I can still grow into a little more and be comfortable. Um, at 47, I didn't have that. You know, at 47, I was like, if I grow too much, I'm just, if I get, if I gain a little bit of muscle, whatever, um, the, the weight cut is going to be extremely hard. And at 54, I don't feel that I feel like I still have a little more room to grow. And um, I want to stay here for a while and, 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 you know, fight some of the top guys. Hopefully, you know, the winner of the, Jamal Charlo versus Castaño rematch. Um, if they're still champions, you know, when I when I get to compete at, for for one for a belt, hopefully, you know, I get to fight one of them. But you know, I think fifty four is, is a wait for me. I I wanted to ask you about that, right? Obviously, you have Charlo and Castano coming up. What do you think of their first fight? And then who do you think is gonna win the second fight? I was rooting for Castaño, man. I was rooting for Castaño, and I felt like he did just enough to pull it off. I felt like he outworked uh, Charlo a little. 
And um, I thought I thought he pulled it off, but he did get uh, rocked a couple of times, and uh, he lost it. He lost. He lost those rounds. So I mean, it was real close. I I was happy with the draw. I was happy. I was happy that nobody you know lost, and because they they both did a did a a, a great job. I feel like in the rematch, it's gonna be Castaño. I feel like he's gonna. I feel, I feel like he he has what it takes to beat a Jamar Charlo. You know, Jamar Charlo is strong and powerful, but. I think the pressure of, of Castaño was getting to him in that fight, and um, I see him taking it. But it, it's it's extremely competitive. I, I'm excited for that one. So you got Castaño. Um, I mean, you're you're obviously in the not so distant future. You know, when when that shot comes, it's kind of political. We don't know when the title shot comes, but you're obviously on a short list. Um, know that all the belts are going to be held by one guy in another month or so. Um, is it? Do you have a preference? Like, would you say stylistically, I'd rather fight Castano or I'd rather fight Jamel? Is there, or is it? Just, I don't care. I'll I'll fight any of them. Um, I'll fight any any of them. But I think um, Charlo Charlo style would be, I don't know, not I want to say easier. Just I think Castano has that come forward style that, I mean, he's always there. He's always bothering you, you know. So it it can get pretty o- o- overwhelming. So I would say, you know, with Charlo, you can kind of have a chess match, kind of think a little more. But like you said, I'll fight anybody, man, especially if it's for a chance to become a world champion. Any of the two, man, anybody. And, and the way that the sanctioning bodies work, you know, one of them may have to take a mandatory in the interim meeting. You know, you might not get your title shot next, next, you know. Um, yeah. There's another guy in your weight class who put on a show in a really good fight who's about six foot seven. Uh, Sebastian Fandora, right? Uh, put a good fight, tough fight with Sergio Garcia, tough fight, but a, a, a good win over a good fighter. Do you look at this as a guy? Like, I, I'm gonna, one way or another, me and Sebastian yeah. Fandora are gonna, we're gonna meet up at some point. Yeah, now, now that I'm at 154, yeah, you know, I have to fight him, of course, uh, one day in the future. And uh, that's a tough fight, man. That's what I was thinking um, when I was watching this fight Saturday night, you know, how, how to fight him because he's so tough. You know, and he's got good uppercut. So it's like once you're in there, it's not like you, oh, you're safe because you, you're inside and he's going to start working you on the inside as well. So he's got to be careful, you know. But um, I think that's an interesting fight. I think that would be a, a great fight. I feel like, um, uh, you know, his last fight, you know, I had I had Fundora a little higher than, than what, how he looked on his last fight. You know, I, I thought Fundora was um, – re- re- I thought he was really, really good. You know, I didn't think he looked as good – as I thought he was in his last fight. But, um, you know, who knows? Maybe just an off night. I mean, he hasn't fought since May as well, so who knows? And Sergio Garcia is, is a tricky, tough opponent. I mean, look, Sebastian Fedor took care of business and he, and he won the fight. I thought he won it clearly. But that's a tough opponent he had. Now, that's not, you know, it's, it's a good fighter. That's a veteran he was in with. Yeah, he, he was he was tough. He, he knew what he was doing in there, man. Sergio Garcia knew what he was doing. And, yeah, he... he that, that, that could have played a factor as well, man. So I want to ask you, obviously, you come from Arizona. You know, Arizona was the home of Carver Hall for a while. Then you had Beltran. Now you got a bunch of young fighters. You, David Benavidez, Jose Benavidez. What's going on in Arizona all of a sudden that's putting out all this young talent? I mean, two of the best young fighters in the sport, you and, and David. Um, how old was David? David was 19 when he won a world title? Or was he 20? He was 20. 20, yeah. All right, you, you, got, to, you got to do it this year. <laughs> you can't let <laughs> Well, what's, the, what's going on, Arizona? All of a sudden, that it, it's putting out all, all these really, really good young fighters. Ah, uh, man, there's always been talent here in Arizona. Ever since you know my uncle was in the amateurs, I remember there was a lot of talent. I mean, my uncle came up with uh, Jose Benavides Jr. You know, in the amateurs, so it was it was a lot of uh, talent. And right now, there's a lot of talent as well. You know, I I think you know just mentioning david me myself and uh, my uncle is not enough man and there's a lot of talent here in, in in arizona and i can tell you firsthand because you know we have a lot of these guys come to to our gym and spar us you know and 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 they're great fighters man i think all we need is a little more recognition a little more uh media a little more you know a platform where they can display their talent but uh i think it's coming i think it's coming now that you know david just fought here in phoenix uh, hopefully one day I can fight here in Phoenix, and it's coming. You know, it's just we're, we're bringing the attention to Phoenix fighters now, Arizona fighters in general. Uh, yeah. I went to, what? Oh, it was uh, Jake, Danny Jacobs, and uh, was that in Phoenix? That was Phoenix, right? 
Yeah, Danny yeah, Jacobs. Yeah, okay, I haven't finished recently for a fight. Yeah, Danny Jacobs and Gabe Rosado. Is that the fight was it? No, was Danny it? and uh, Chavez. Yeah, right? okay, yeah, yeah. It was Jacobs and Chavez was the fight. Yeah, I, I know it was there recently for a fight. It was it was Jacobs and Chavez. Um, no, Phoenix is a, is, a, is a great city. It's a great fight city. It's, 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 a, it's a vibrant fight city. Um, I would, if you're going to fight there, if you're going to, you know, fight for a world title there or defend your title there, I'm there. I'm there. I'll, I'll be there. Absolutely. Um, so what you said, 154 is the weight that you're going to stay at. 154, you, you said you make it comfortably, um, which is hard to believe because of the size of you, right? Like you look like a super middleweight. Um, I mean, obviously you won a world title. Do you know when you're going to be back in the ring? What's the future plans? When can we see Jesus Ramos again? Um, you know, it's been – after my last fight, it's been crazy, man. Um, for a while, we thought we were going to be on the Canelo undercard. And, um, you know, it was too soon. We didn't have enough uh, training time and all of that. So they told us just to wait on it. We, we were supposed to come back this month in December, uh, like 31st, New Year's Eve. And um, they pushed that one back to the 29th from on okay. Monday. So, and, and, and now with Charlo and Castaño um, looking to fight, I'm still kind of in the air. You know, I'm either on the undercard of my uncle or I'm on the undercard of, of Charlo and Castaño. So if, if it happens, you know, around the same time, they, they told me like two weeks after the 29th or on the 29th. So it's either or right now. It, it all, we all just got to wait um, on what Charlo and Castaño decide to do. And then, you know, everything comes, you know, comes down to me. <laughs> I mean, it would make sense. I know you want to fight on the same card as your uncle, obviously. But yeah. from, from, from from a marketing standpoint, it would make sense to put you on the same card as Charlo versus Castano, right? Because that's exactly. the current champion, and then you're, you're the blue chip prospect who's going to be fighting for that title in the very near future. So, I mean, that would make sense to put you on that card. But so either, well, you'll be back in January, either January or, or uh, yeah. So either one, yeah. So it's perfect, you know. Like you said, either I fight on my, my uncle's undercard or uh, the Charlo Castaño, which is great because it's in my same weight class. So it's a great opportunity. So you know, it's just got. I just gotta be patient. Uh, we've been training for a while now, you know, since September after my fight. I fought early September, so I've been training since, um, you know, mid mid September, and just it hasn't stopped, man. It hasn't stopped. I mean, obviously we we lower down the the intensity, but. We stay in the gym. I want to ask you uh, two questions just about you know, where you are through your career so far. Best fighter you fought and then best moment in the – let's start with that. Best fighter you've been in the ring with so far, professional or amateur? Best uh, – you know what? It, in terms of my fights, I would say Javier Molina. He was tricky, man. That that He was really, really tricky. He had a lot up his sleeve, and uh, it was not an easy fight. You know, I had to work for that fight. But um, you know, he was tough. He was he was tough in terms of he had a lot of experience. He had a lot of ring generalship, and um, he he was he was tricky. Uh, and uh, you beat Javier Blue, who's an excellent fighter. You beat him while you were still a teenager, correct? You were still nineteen when that fight yeah. happened. Uh, yeah. that's 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 impressive stuff. And then um, best moment in the ring. What was you know? You look back at your career thus far, professional or amateur. What's your what's your greatest moment in the ring so far? Uh, my knockout over Ricky Edwards, man. You know that was what well, was Canada knockout of the year, and um, it was my first fight professionally that I had. You know, left for training camp, done everything professional. You know, I had just graduated high school, so I I was able to do that. I was able to just focus on boxing and and do and and do what other boxers do. You know, just focus on their fight and train. So we we left for to Vegas for training camp. You know, I was in there with Keandre Gibson sparring for like six weeks, and um, I was I was ready. And I was only I was only eighteen, and so it was all different to me. And and then I I got a I got a huge knockout over a guy that had never been stopped before. A guy that was supposed to give me rounds, and I knocked him out. And it was just crazy, man. I, I've seen Ricky Edwards on a bunch of cards. He's a good fighter. Yeah, you're not supposed to blow Ricky. I mean. Obviously, they expect you to beat Ricky Edwards, but yeah. most guys are supposed to test you and and and, yeah. and up your game. And, and that was uh, that was in California, correct? And that was on uh, Chris Colbert for that Thomas Dorme for that card. Is that Peter Quillen yeah. for that? Yeah, that that time, yeah, that card. That was a couple of years ago. That was 2018, 2019. 
2019, yeah. 2019. 2019. That was, yeah, that was a few years ago. Um, uh, so the last thing I want to ask you, right? Um, like you said, we, we, we mentioned Chris Colbert, who I think is one of the best prospects we have. David Morrell, and then there's Virgil and Boots. Um, do you – like, I get you to you guys the future of boxing. Do you kind of compare yourself? Like, okay, I want to get to a world champion. Now, you're younger than all those guys, but I want to get to a world champion, a world title before those guys. Like, I want to get to a title before Boots or before Virgil or before David Morrell. Like, does that play in your head? It does. It does all the time because, I mean, I'm a boxer and it's in my nature to compete, you know, with and anything I do. Uh, sometimes I catch myself competing and I'm not doing anything important. But I always like to compete, you know, and it's – um. I see these guys and I'm like, oh, I want to be a world champion, you know, younger than them. I want to be like uh, like Benavides, you know, he became a world champion at 20. And, um, you know, I, I, want, I want to be there up with those guys. But uh, over time, you know, I've learned to take my time. I've learned that um, I, I, everything happens for a reason and I just got to be patient. I've been patient, you know, with everything. I've been, I've, I've been growing a lot as a fighter with my last fights. So I just been I've been I've been I've known now that I gotta take my time and, and just soak everything up. There's a lot I need to learn and, and and if my time doesn't isn't for this year, you know, maybe next year and maybe maybe the year after that. But I'll 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 be more than ready because you know, now I know what I need to learn and this and that. So I just I like to be patient, man. Hey hey, Jesus Ramos, 17 and 0, 14 knockouts, right? 17 and 14 knockouts. Um Blue chip junior middleweight, you know, future world champion, probably future multi division world champion. Um, let everyone know where they can find you on social media. Uh, Jesus Ramos Jr. underscore on uh, Instagram, Jesus Ramos Jr. on Facebook and Twitter, man. Um, it was a pleasure. Thank you for your time, Jesus, and uh, best of luck, whether it's January or early February. Uh, best of luck, man. Look forward to seeing you fight again. Thank you, man. I appreciate your time. God bless, champ. Thank you. Thank you.